Eugene, can we have a bit more firepower in our next video? I don't know, something like hot hatches or sports cars even. Guys, if you really want to see this kind of video, please help us a bit and go crazy in the comment section. But these two cars that we have here, they have just as much power, more creature comforts than ever before. They can go far, they can go rough. We have pickups. We have two of the latest pickups in the market here with us today. The Isuzu D-Max X-Terrain at 141,000 ringgit and the Nissan Navara Pro 4X at 142,000 ringgit. Don't you think these new pickups these days look like Gundam robots? Uh? Look at the Navara, the D-Max, even the Triton. They look like they can turn into Transformers anytime. Yeah, but they're also full of creature comforts now and that's exactly what we'll be looking at today. Do you know there's even a study by Isuzu that says 44% of pickup truck owners today are actually using them as lifestyle vehicles. Wow, that's actually quite a lot. So I suppose they need to be tough on the outside and soft on the inside? We already know how capable they are off-road, but do these pickups have what it takes for people to use them as daily cars? Let's find out. Starting with exterior features, the all-new D-Max now comes with this angry-looking bi-LED projector headlights with automatic high beam, LED daytime running lights, LED combination tail lamps, and even LED fog lights on both the front and rear ends. What? Bi projectors? Yo, look, I've got bi plus bi. That's quad projectors with high beam assist. And just to add to the cool factor, I've even got white letterings on my tyres. Okay, okay. But why don't we check out the back? Sure. First of all, the wheels on the Navara are smaller. 17 to my 18 inches. And because this is the X-Terrain, I also get this sliding cargo tray as standard. Quite useful, huh? Anyway, thanks to this standard tailgate dampers, I can also close the tailgate with just one finger. I may not have those fancy dampers in mind, but with a different system, I can close it just the same. Aside from the quad projectors, like the D-Max, the Navara also gets LED daytime running lights and front fog lights. But the rear fog lights uses bulbs. In terms of ground clearance, you're looking at 225mm in the Navara and 240mm in the D-Max. As for weighting depth, 600 millimeters for the Navara and 800 millimeters for the D-Max. The D-Max's cargo bed is longer at 1,571 millimeters compared to the 1,469 millimeters of the Navara. The Navara's is, however, 30 millimeters wider at 1,560 millimeters and deeper at 519 millimeters compared to the 490 millimeters of the D-Max. And on top of that. It also boasts a higher rated payload than the D-Max. If you're wondering why the D-Max has a lower payload than the Navara, that's because the X-Terrain here comes with comfort-oriented, lighter-duty leaf springs, while the core springs on the face lifted Navara has been upgraded for better payload. As for the looks, I think we can agree that both have their own appeal. The Navara looks tough without trying too hard. And with the square block look, personally, I think it just has more presence especially with this colour. And that's why people buy pickups for daily use, right? For that presence and cool factor. On the D-Max, it's definitely more modern looking compared to its predecessor. It's aggressive without being too shouty. While the orange colour might not be for the construction side, it's definitely trendy enough for young people like me to actually want to drive it to the office. And when you compare it to the colour of the Navara, that just looks like primer colour, like it's not even painted. The Navara comes with an 8-inch infotainment display, 6 speakers, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. But disappointingly, for a pickup that costs more than 140,000 ringgit, you have to adjust the seats manually. You mean you can't do this? People are buying these trucks to go work in offices now. They're not manual laborers. Automatic is the way to go. And speaking of the seats, they don't just look good in brown, they're also properly supportive, almost like bucket seats with shoulder support. 
Also, proper entertainment comes from more speakers lah. I mean, come on, mine has eight. We're talking about modern pickups, not pickups from 2010. Both seats have their own individual look. The Pro 4X may not have it, but you do get it in the VL variant. The D-Max may look more premium, but mine has that active lifestyle, young and cool look. Wait, do you see an 8-inch display? You know they say the bigger the better, right? Mine's 9 inches, bro. Since we're comparing sizes, I've got a 7-inch multi-information display that's bigger than before and compared to the D-Max. And it looks really nice because it actually utilizes the space between the two meters. Yeah, okay, fair. But mine has more infos and parameters. Yeah, that may be, but the graphics on it look like Nintendo video games from the 90s. But I guess you wouldn't know that lah. You know he's always laughing at GC for being old. Look who's the old one now. The cabin of the D-Max also feels a lot more premium than the Navara thanks to the dual-tone soft touch padding on the dashboard and door cuts. There's also a lot more storage compartments, a much more modern control panel for the two-zone automatic aircon, plus two USB ports for your mobile phones. Two USB ports? We're talking about something that people use to carry their friends, to go for hiking, carry their colleagues, to go for lunch. You need a lot more than that. In here, there's four. As for the rest of the Navara's interior, it may not look as premium as the D-Max, but it still has soft touch surfaces where it matters and a new steering wheel design. Although I'm not sure why they removed the cup holders by the aircon vents on the side, that's actually something you'd want to make a pickup more livable. The leather inside the D-Max actually feels really smooth and luxurious. And the whole brown colour theme actually makes the cabin feel a lot more premium a lot more matured. If you blindfolded me, I would have actually thought that I was sitting inside an SUV. And on top of that, or rather should I say, underneath that, Isuzu has also added a layer of special foam to the seat that's said to absorb more vibrations. There's also more shoulder room and the seatback angles here has actually also been lessened so you'll feel more natural sitting down. Yeah, I don't get the fancy leather upholstery like in the D-Max, but like the front seats, the rear seats also come with this funky stitching. I think there's a nice contrast in the cabin between these two pickups. This one looks a little sporty and youthful, while the other one looks mature and premium. As for the seat angle, well, never really thought there was a problem with it anyways, even with the pre-facelift model. But what about the space? Ah, the Navara may be 5mm wider than the D-Max, but with three occupants back here, the shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder room can be quite limited compared to the D-Max. Both of these pickups also come with a USB charging port and aircon vents at the rear. It's safe to say that pickups have indeed come a long way. Now, let's move on to things that we like and don't like about these trucks. This unique rail and hook system is actually quite useful. It gives you a lot of flexibility when you're trying to hold things down in the cargo bed, as opposed to other pickups where the hook is mounted dead. The remote engine start feature is actually really useful in our Malaysian climate because on a hot day, you can actually start the engine and cool down the cabin first before you actually step into the car. All you have to do is click the lock button and hold on to the engine start button. Now this is a little gimmicky but I find it to be quite interesting. At the end of every journey, the multi-information display actually shows you an eco report to show you the fuel consumption of your last drive actually keeps you on your feet. If you have something really valuable you want to hide from the world, in the D-Max, you can actually keep it underneath the rear seats over here in these hidden storage compartments. What's also convenient is the bird's eye view feature on the infotainment display. Especially when you're driving such a big car, trying to maneuver it through tight spaces. It is also what I don't like because the resolution can be a lot better. Not only do I have the larger infotainment display, my car also comes with the wireless Apple CarPlay connectivity. And the best part is, when you connect your phone for the first time with the cable, it actually asks if you want to use the wireless feature to save you from all of the fiddly Bluetooth connection process. For all of the features that the infotainment has, the software itself is really old and clunky, and it just looks like it came from a cheap Android tablet. For someone like me with long legs and long hands, not having the telescopic feature for my steering does make it quite hard to find the right sitting position. 
For a car this size, it's really quite unfortunate that it doesn't come with a 360 degrees surround view monitor. And to make things even worse, the reverse camera isn't even that clear. Personally, I think the car looks this cool mainly because of its dimensions. But for the same reason, not having front parking sensors can make it quite challenging when you're trying to estimate space. In terms of output, they're identical. Both put out 190 horsepower and 450 newton meters, but in the Navara, it's from a 2.5 liter engine, while in D-Max, a 3 liter engine. Now, although both of these cars have the same power output, the D-Max here actually has a wider torque band from 1,600 to 2,600 RPM, as opposed to the Navara's 2,500. And what this means is that power on this car actually comes in a lot earlier. And in day-to-day -day city use, the D-Max actually feels quite a lot lighter on its feet. On that note, I think the acceleration in the Navara can feel a little more progressive. But still, plenty of power, and with the multi-link rear suspension, the coil springs, the looks, the seats. I'd even consider this a sports truck. Powerful as it may be, I think the transmission requires a little updating. It works fine when you're not in a hurry, you're driving in chillax mode, but when you're rushing it a bit, it just sort of holds a high rev, takes about maybe half a second, one second before it changes to the next gear. It can be quite unsettling, you're wondering like, hey, why, why, change gear, change gear. It feels a little unnatural. I can't say the same about my gearbox because it actually feels quite intuitive in response to my right foot. Although, I only have 6 gears as opposed to the Navara 7, under acceleration, it does tend to want to rev a bit higher. And as a result, engine noise can be a bit of a problem. I think you can only get so much refinement from a diesel engine in a pickup. But still, compared to the D-Max, I'd say it's just a little quieter in here. Just a little. Especially when you're going full throttle. I think if you're looking for a diesel to use every day for their good mileage, your options are actually quite limited. It's either the Continental cars, pickups, or perhaps SUVs like the CX-8 or the Santa Fe. Because it's a diesel, you're almost guaranteed high mileage per tank. And their tanks are huge. 76 litres in one and 80 litres in the other. And they're quite efficient as well. In fact, it has come quite close to the advertised fuel economy rating. I've been getting 8.5 to about 8.7 litres per 100 kilometres. And I think that's quite good. I've also managed to clock at around the same figures. And at highway speeds, the engine hovers at a pretty manageable 1,800 RPM. But even though these pickups can travel long distance, you really wouldn't want to do it unless it's comfortable. And the good news is the D-Max here actually rides surprisingly well. I don't feel the same amount of the classic jitteriness that you get on the other pickups. And even handles larger bumps pretty well too, even though it still has leaf springs at the back. From where I'm sitting, I've got no complaints there as well. The Navara may have higher payload, but still just as comfortable without resorting to leaf springs. Speaking of comfort, while the cabin insulation may not be the best, especially with a diesel engine in front, in terms of wind noise, it's actually pretty good. I would even say that it's better than some passenger cars. If anything, most of the noise actually comes from the all-terrain tyres. So if you're getting a pickup for urban use, maybe look into some different ones. With pickups being used more and more for city driving nowadays, driving aids are actually just as important as everything we spoke about earlier. And in that sense, these two are equally as capable. The D-Max X Terrain comes with a long list of advanced driver assistance features, including things like autonomous emergency braking with oncoming traffic detection, adaptive cruise control with stop-go function, lane departure warning, blind spot monitor, rear cross traffic alert, and a pedal misapplication mitigation system. But the best part of it all is that they all actually feel really natural and intuitive to use and are not just there to pad the spec sheets. The Navara offers nearly similar features, except that it lacks the adaptive cruise control feature, although it still has the basic cruise control. Especially in such big cars, features like the blind spot monitor, the rear cross traffic alert can be quite useful, especially when you're reversing out of tight spots, when visibility is limited. These days, 
they even come with autonomous braking, both the Navara and D Max, in a pickup. But having said all that, personally, it may look cool and all with the size and presence, but for the same reason, it can be quite challenging in certain conditions. Even with the fancy sensors and the cameras, it's just inevitable for something so big. I do have to agree with him on that. He drives a sedan and I drive a hatchback. So moving to something this big do actually require some getting used to. For context, I live in a condo. And to be honest, driving this thing in and out of the parking lot the past few days might have actually been the most stressful thing I've done this year. Because not only do I have to look out for the sights when I turn onto the ramps, I also have to worry about the height against the ceiling. And the pickup truck itself is so much longer than my parking space. And one more thing, these pickups also have a pretty terrible turning radius. So if you're driving this in the city a lot, you really do have to pick and choose where you make your U-turns. I have to say, both fare quite poorly when it comes to turning radius, but I think it's partly down to the size of those tyres. In that aspect, I think the Triton deserves a mention. Among all the pickups that I've tried, it seems to have the smallest turning radius. But still, the difference is not day and night. Personally, I'm not a fan of pickups, but I think it's obvious that they've come such a long way that I think, honestly, if you wanted to live with one, you actually can. As opposed to before, it would have been absolutely unbearable. Just like the old pickups my uncle used to drive. Just awful. So, which of these pickups are for you? If you're after something with size and presence, with a tinge of SUV-like comfort, then I'd recommend you check out the Nissan Navara. But if you want all that, plus the latest tech like remote engine start, walk away auto lock, and sophisticated driving aids, then maybe you should check out the D-Max. For more information on these two pickups, do log on to autobus.my. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, share it, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click on the bell icon for the notifications on all of our latest videos. Yeah.